Hey guys, welcome to my channel for another Elden Ring boss guide. This time we're talking about the Crucible Knight, the, specifically the sword and shield wielding Crucible Knight that we can find at this Everjail here, the Stormhill Everjail. Likely the first or second Everjail you will discover in the game that you can find in Limgrave towards the beginning of the game. I'm going to teach you how I defeat it, both by dodging and parrying. I generally fight these mostly by parrying, but I'm going to show you guys specifically how I go about it with dodging as well, because a lot of people think that it's not possible, and it very much so is. It just has very tight timing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do nothing but parrying in the first half of the fight so you see what I mean by, you know, the parry windows, and then I will focus on meleeing it without parrying in the second half of the fight so you can see that it is possible even with the tail whipping going on like crazy. With that said, let's get started. As always, when you open up a fight with the Everjail, you can get in two or three attacks really quickly. Something to keep in mind with the Crucible Knight is most of its attacks are parryable. Every single sword strike outside of when it's wielding the sword with two hands is completely parryable, so you don't have to worry about much of anything there. The only thing you need to worry about with the Crucible Knight is the shield attack and then the, the stomp with the, uh, the rock waves going out. If you dodge those, everything else is pretty simple. In fact, I would recommend if you want to learn to parry, this Crucible Knight will teach you a lot. This is exactly where I learned to parry pretty well. There's the rock attack that I'm mentioning. You can parry that one as well. You want to make sure you not, do not get hit by those ground stomps because they can cause a little bit of a stagger, which means they'll be able to follow up with a sword attack, and it does devastating damage. Once I get him to phase two, you'll see that you'll see his transformation. You'll see him do like a, a stomp on the ground. He'll glow gold and he'll grow some wings and start flying at you. At that moment is when I'll teach you how to beat him with only dodging. You can do the dodging in the first half as well, but a lot of people talk about how difficult it is specifically in the second half of the fights. So I'm going to do it specifically there so that way I can teach you guys those moments. You should shield strike for the next attack here. There it is. Roll out of the way of that. Do a quick sword strike and back off. This is one of the two-handed attacks. He'll stomp and then slash the sword onto the ground. If you're far away, he won't follow it up with another attack, but if you are close, he'll actually follow it up with a 360 horizontal attack, swinging the sword twice. Do so you want to be aware of that? Be very careful of it. All right, he might go phase two here. Nope. All right, now we should phase two. When he does that, we'll put the shield away so there's no more parries. Here it is, phase two. Now, he's going to grow go grow wings, fly up in the sky, and then lunge at you. You can jump over him at the apex of the, uh, the rush there, but you can also dodge through it. Now, from now on, during phase two, you see that tail attack? Whenever you're melee range, he will do that after every single one of his attacks if you're close enough. So we're going to teach you exactly how to attack in these moments. Here's another one of these. I'll show you the dodge roll. You can dodge towards him or to the side, but never dodge backwards against that wing attack because it will hit you. The hitbox, uh, the theory is, is you want to make the hitbox as small as possible by passing through it. So as long as you pass through it by jumping or dodging to forward or to the side, it will never hit you. Now, let me show you how I attack through the, uh, through the tail. You basically just want to do one or two attacks after the tail. I generally stick to one because it's safer. Just like that. You can jump over it. And oftentimes as well, after he does the, uh, the flying attack, he will do a tail attack if you are close enough. But when he gets about a quarter health, he'll actually do two tail attacks, one of which has a very long range. So keep that in mind when you are uh, fighting against him in these moments. It has very long range and it will hit you from pretty far away. I'll try to show that to you guys as well. All right, there's the attack. We attack once and then we dodge. It's a slow fight, it's laboring, but it's very possible to do it without, uh, without dying and without parrying. The same stuff will apply to casting spells and using arrows. All right, there's that big tail attack. Like I said, we got him to do it. He can hit me from the other side of the rock. That's how far range it is. 
so you need to make sure that you're ready to dodge twice when he does that. Another tail, we attack once, we back off. Another tail, here's a jump. He should tail attack again. Oh, he did not. That attack right there is a moment to get a pretty free double attack in if you're able to time that well. I do not recommend it as it is a little bit more risky, but it is something you can still pull off if you choose to. And then when he does the double tail attack here, you can actually get two, in it, two attacks in without much, uh, without much risk. So if you're able to pull that off, that's something I would recommend as well. But again, that's a more advanced tip, so be aware of the risk you're taking with it. There it is, another post-tail attack. We back off. Here comes the lunge, here comes the tail. We attack again, we back up. Very safe, very clean. Another uh, lunge attack with the wings, we dodge. Here comes the double tail. We strike him twice, we roll, we roll, we strike, we roll. Very clean. Just assume that all of his attacks will have a tail coming out afterward. Even if he doesn't actually do it, it's best to assume that he will for the sake of keeping your health up. You don't want him to hit you with it because it's not small amounts of damage. You saw what damage it did to me earlier. You want to avoid that whenever possible. We attack twice. We roll. We roll. We roll. 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 Attack. Here comes tail. Attack. So it is completely possible to take out a Crucible Knight with nothing but dodging. You don't have to worry about parrying. I'm just going to squash that rumor right here, right now. You do not have to parry to get through this fight. There's plenty of opportunity to land melee attacks with nothing but dodging. You just have to time it properly. With that said, guys, I hope this Crucible Knight fight guide does help you out. This is applicable to every Crucible Knight that uses a sword and shield. This is not applicable to the ones with the spears, so keep that in mind. But that is strictly just the sword and shield variant, including Ordovis himself. Anyways, I'm out of here for now, guys. I hope this video helps you. Thank you for liking, commenting, and subscribing, and I'll see you soon for more.